Welcome back to another edition of Dick Sports. I'm Andrew Alexander alongside Dick Sports editor Trey Monger. Trey, LSU has a 41-3 beatdown, a vintage LSU performance, defense, special teams, a strong running game. Is LSU back? Kenny, Kenny Hill is not necessarily the best runner in the world. Kenny Hill is not Johnny Manziel. He can't make the elusive plays. He's a good quarterback. I think he's going to continue to develop. But when you have a poor defense, when you have a poor running game, and you're expecting a sophomore quarterback to go and beat three of the top five teams in the nation, it's just not going to happen. Kavir, we're going around and asking different guys about who have unusual first names. There's a unique story or origin to that name. So is there one? Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Show. I'm Andrew Alexander alongside Buddy Sanji, the Tigers. Pulled off a big win tonight, 41-3 to in Death Valley. Among actually a bigger crowd than I thought, but, man, I was actually at the stadium for the first half, and it looked like, I know they, they, they said the attendance was around 101,000, probably closer to 90 to 95, but a bigger crowd than I was expecting. Looks like last week in the win against the Gators not only inspired the team, but also inspired the fan base a little bit. The uh, LSU track and field team finished up this past week in Eugene, Oregon at the Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Uh, the LSU track and field is not as dominant as they once were, but they still finished very well men's track finished in fourth place while the women took the sixth place uh, trophy home. A couple of our record setters actually, Tori Bliss set the LSU record and got second in women's shot put and Jasmine Stowers got second place at 100 meter hurdles, also an LSU record with a 12.54 time and the LSU men's team brought home the, the, the bronze medal in the 4x1 and 4x400 meter relays. So good stuff going on the track and field team up in Eugene, Oregon. Well I think that a lot of people overestimated Dylan Thompson and there's a reason a guy, a guy like himself was not the starter for four years and sat behind Connor Shaw. He's a good quarterback. He's just not a great SEC quarterback. Connor Shaw is a guy that was a dual threat type in talent. And also their defense is not very good. Their secondary it really got exposed that first game against Texas A&M. Yeah, Kenny Hill just blew him up all, all throughout. And they've just played really poorly. I think they let a, a big, they let a huge lead slip away in Lexington. Well, their biggest test in order to get nine wins, they're probably going to have to get a victory this week over the Ole Miss Rebels. Number three team in the nation comes in undefeated to Tiger Stadium. Just a four-point favorite right now by the boys in Vegas. How do you see the Tigers uh, faring this week uh, offensively? The LSU Paul M. A. Bear Law Center is home to over 600 aspiring attorneys. And last Saturday, nearly 70 of LSU Law's male students exchanged their textbooks for shoulder pads to face off on the gridiron. The game is called the Barristers Bowl. And on Saturday, Purple faced off against Gold in the 11th edition of this epic matchup between future attorneys. In front of a hearty crowd, the Barristers Bowl featured near misses, big hits, cheerleaders, and even a Brian Bosworth impersonator. Win, baby, win. That's all I can say, you know. But football is merely a vehicle for these students to raise money for a worthy cause. This year's beneficiary was St. Jude Children's Hospital in honor of Parker Rivera, a 15-year-old boy who recently lost his battle with cancer, and the younger brother of third-year LSU law student Lauren Rivera. The Rivera family was on hand Saturday to support Team Parker. I mean, they, they, they were just happy to be here. You know, you know, it's kind of over. I can imagine it's very overwhelming. You know, for them, you know, having lost Parker recently, and you know, seeing just you know the support out here. You know, they're our extended family, man. Us all at the law center. You know, Lauren was. My class, she's my classmate. We're in the same section one L year, and, you know, we just want them to know, you know, we all care for them, thinking about them, keeping them in our prayers, and, you know, we'll come together and do something like this for a good cause. On the field, the game started out as a defensive struggle with three first quarter turnovers. But thanks to the speed of running back Chris Carter, the goal team finally broke through to score their first touchdown, taking a 7-0 lead. Not to be outdone, the purple team responded with a bruising touchdown run by 6'6", 225-pound quarterback Alex Williams, but failed to find the end zone on the ensuing two-point conversion. Meanwhile, the goal team returned to the well of Chris Carter, letting the second-year law student run wild and route to his second touchdown score of the game, putting the goal team up 13-6. The purple team found some success moving the ball on its final drive, but was ultimately thwarted by the hard-hitting goal defense as victory slipped right through the purple team's fingers. We just played pretty hard. We got, they started uh, they started stopping us on offense, but our defense went up there and played pretty tough. Uh, I think we ran the ball hard, man. We, we didn't pass well. We didn't do a lot of things well. We tried to give them the game. We fumbled at the five right before we were going to go up. I, I was stupid right before halftime and decided to try and get body slammed. Um, that didn't work. We let the clock run out. We left points on the board. But, you know, we came out with it, and that's all that matters. In the end, gold defeated Purple 13-6. to their third straight victory in the 11-year series. For Pelican Broadcasting, I'm Andrew Alexander. I like Mississippi State. I like South Carolina to pull the upset. Whoa. And I like Ole Miss to come in and not only beat LSU, but beat LSU down handily, probably by three touchdowns. It's going to be a hotty tidy kind of night down in Tiger Stadium, unfortunately, for all the LSU fans out there. Enjoy Cowbell Week, y'all.